Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem that we found in a JE main test is pretty confusing. And I would recommend the test organization to just simply remove this from a test like this because it is too difficult to even understand what they're actually talking about. So there's a lot of room for misinterpretation. But hey, it's on the test. You're a student. You're seeing it on the test and you have to get through that problem somehow. So this is how we should look at it. So the problem reads as follows. It deals with ferromagnetic material placed in a magnetic field. A soft ferromagnetic material is placed in an external magnetic field. The magnetic domains, plural, and there's four possible answers. Decrease in size and changes orientation. May increase or decrease in size and change its orientation. Increase in size but no change in orientation. Have no relation with the external magnetic field. So the diagrams I put on the bottom board were not part of the test. I put them there to make things a little bit easier for us to understand. So let's say we have a magnetic field and we place in it a ferromagnetic material which will draw the magnetic field through it. So magnetic field lines that otherwise would have easily bypassed the material will simply get bent and will end up going through the ferromagnetic material increasing the strength of the magnetic field in there. Now what does that do? Well, notice that you'll have atoms and molecules inside the ferromagnetic material which will be oriented in a random fashion so that the polarity, the plus or minus of the, of the individual atoms and molecules will be pointing in all the various directions. But then, since we have moving charges, moving electrons that are zipping around in each of these molecules and atoms, they will then interact with the magnetic field because after all, moving charges feel a force, the experience of force caused by the existing magnetic field which will align them, which will try to align all these different orientations in the same direction. Now, it will not all put them all in the same direction like this because they're all locked in, but it's kind of like things attached to a spring, so there will be some motion, some attempt to move the orientation of the polarity of the atoms and molecules in that same direction. There will be some change. For example, this one right here will straighten itself out just a little bit. Uh, this one over here will straighten itself out. Again, with this one, you can see how they'll attempt all to line up. But what happens to the ones that are upside down, like this one, that are upside down at an angle, or that are sideways like that? But again, like this one, we'll try to orient in that direction. But what happens to this one right here, which is already oriented correctly, it will cause that orientation, or not the orientation, but the magnitude of the polarization to extend itself, so it will become like longer or stronger. One that is in the opposite direction, that can turn around, will end up becoming a little bit shorter due to the effect. So the effect is that this will negate the overall average a little bit less, and in general you'll have more of a electric field pointing in a specific direction due to the reorientation of the randomness of the atoms and molecules in the ferromagnetic material. So now when we read the four possible answers, how can we make sense out of this? Well, the first one says that the magnetic domains, and first of all, what do we mean by the magnetic domains? And I'm assuming the, what's happening inside the ferromagnetic material called domains. I wasn't quite sure what they meant by that. It says it decreases in size and changes orientation. Well, change orientation seems to make sense. Decrease in size is not necessarily correct because this one will actually increase in size. So because of that, I would say A is not a correct answer. The next one says may increase or decrease, meaning one or the other could occur in size and change its orientation. Well, notice the word may, because in some cases it will not change orientation. This one is already pointing in the right direction, so the orientation will not change. But this one does indeed increase, and this one does indeed decrease. So all three are possible, so it looks like B is probably the correct answer. Next one, it says increase in size, but no change in orientation. Well, that one is definitely wrong. We know for sure that orientation changes will occur due to the, the uh, magnetic field interacting with the, with the atoms and molecules, so that's not correct. 
And the last one have no relation with external magnetic field. And that's of course not correct either because there is an effect. So that would eliminate C and D automatically. So if you're not sure how to answer this question, C and D is probably quickly um, eliminated as possibilities. But then I was a little bit confused with answer A because yeah, decrease in size, I know orientation changes, but decrease in size I was confused because I wasn't sure what they meant by the magnetic domains. But when I think about it like this, which I know is what happens inside the ferromagnetic material, it seems to make sense that B is a more likely uh, correct answer because it may increase, decrease, and it may change its orientation because it's not always the case for every atom or molecule because they all have random, uh, random directions. Uh, therefore, I'd say yes, I would pick B and it turns out B was indeed the right answer. But it's such a confusing question. But yes, if you take the test and you see this, you're stuck with it. You have to somehow survive through it and hopefully pick the right answer before you go on to the next one. And that is how it's done.